right there where you are, would you close your eyes and just tell him, yes, I am, Lord. I am your child. I am your son. I am your daughter. Lord, everything you have done, Lord, is with me in your mind. We thank you. We thank you for your presence in this place. We thank you for reminding us who we are in you, Lord. It doesn't matter the way we came in this place. What matters is what we are in you, Jesus. So help us to take that with us every step of our lives. Worthy of every song we could ever sing. Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring. Worthy of every breath we could ever bring. Live for you. Live for you, Lord. Jesus' name above every other name. Jesus, the only one that could ever say. Worthy of every breath we could ever bring. Live for you.
pray one more time. seconds and just thank you just tell them thank you for building my life just tell them thank you for building my life thank you Lord
Jesus. Some of you, you are a model 1946. That's when you became a new creation. Some of you was last week, so you're a model 2019. You may take your seat. But whatever it is, that, or whenever it is that you accepted Christ or dedicated your life to him again, that's the purpose. That's the goal of God sending his only son to die on the cross so that you and I, we have what the Bible calls eternal life. He wants to build your life. He doesn't want just to leave it on the ground. So how many of you say, I receive that? I want God to feel, build my life constantly. Amen? How many of you God still building your life today? <laughs> right? God still building our lives today. Well, we're continuing our series. We started a new series last week called Powerful Words. And here is our key scripture for the, uh, the month. In Proverbs 18, 21, it says this. I want you to read it out loud with me if you can. Read it out loud. Ready? One, two, three. Death. And life are in the power of the tongue. And those who love it will eat its fruit. Let's read it once again. Death and life is in the power of the tongue. And those who love it will eat its fruit. There is power, power, wonder working power. Now, there is power in your words. There, there is power in your words, whether you know it or you uh, Accept it or not, there is power in your words. Believe me, there is power in the tongue of life and death. So what we are looking at is different words that we use, different scripture that God can just encourage us and, again, build us up, right? So last week we talked about complaining. Um, I hope, you know, that you, got a, you caught that uh, message. If you didn't, it's on, it's on, it's on our Facebook page. Uh, also in our YouTube uh, account. But last week, we just narrowed down to two points. Because it would be very difficult to tell the church, okay, church, let us stop complaining. Um, you know why? Because today there was a lot of complaining, <laughs> right? Uh, oh, it's 8.30, not 9.30. You know, I said we lost an hour. In case you don't know, we lost an hour, okay? You're not like, man, I'm really early. No, you're really late. Um, so... Uh, we can complain. We can complain we didn't get enough sleep. We can complain that uh, why do we have to change because of farming? Well, I'm not a farmer. I shouldn't change my clock, you know. And so it's all about complaining. And, and, we, and it would be impossible for me to say, church, stop complaining. But it is possible for you to do two things. And this is what we learned last week. And they're up there on the screen. Number one. If you can change your circumstance, man, I don't like my job, man, I'm tired of this. If you can change it, then do it. Do something about it, okay? Man, I don't like the way I look. Okay, if you can change and exercise and eat healthy, well, then do it. Oh, I don't like my haircut. Well, then change it. Well, I don't like the way that our marriage is working. Okay, well, then you do something to make your marriage work even better. Well, I don't do something about it. Okay, stop complaining. Just do something that will make an impact, a positive impact in your life. Oh, I don't like how my kids behave. Okay, we can't change kids, but what we can do <laughs> is that we can, you know, get some uh, uh, um, uh, ideas from other parents, get some uh, um, uh, other people involved, and make something different, change something, do something. But, and number two, if you can change a circumstance, so if you can change your job, if you can change your family, you know, then change your perspective about it. Change your perspective. Change the, thing, change the way that you think about it. You know, man, I really don't like my job. All right, change, your, change your perspective. But I am grateful that I have a job. Somebody say, praise the Lord for that. Amen. <laughs> yeah. Um, Man, you know, my kids, they're, man, they're, 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 they're a handful. Yeah, but change your perspective. Bless the Lord that you have children that are alive and well, and they're there. Man, this house is so old. Okay, change your perspective. Praise God that I have a place where I can sleep. Does, does that make sense, right? So if you, can if you can do something about it, you know, go ahead and do so. But if you can't, then just change your perspective. And that's what we learned from Paul last week. 
All right, now today we're going to talk about another uh, word. Uh, we're going to talk about criticism. That's uh, the topic for today, criticism. And boy, how in today's world we live in a world that it is just so critical. It is just so critical. There's even shows about how you can put each other down and see who can put the other person down uh, more. And, and that's just, I mean, people just cheer about it. I, have you seen, you know what I'm talking about? There's two people and they're talking about each other and they're just putting them down. And if you watch that show, I encourage you as a pastor, don't. That, that's, that's just, that is not healthy. It is not healthy to stand in front of other other person and, and the crowd and just be belittling each other. And, and so today we're going to look at criticism. Uh, and uh, we're not talking about Positive criticism, you know, the, the, the style, the type that, that just builds you up. Like after I, my message, my wife gives me positive criticism, and I give myself positive criticism. I look at it, and other pastors, they, they, they share with me and say, hey, look, that story took too long. Hey, you know, the, that scripture or, or, or so forth. What did you mean to say here? And, and, and that criticism, you know, kind of helps you. We all have seen positive criticism. I mean, your boss kind of tells you, hey, you can do this better. Your parents, we always try to do that with our kids. But what I'm talking today is about the, 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 the words that are destructive, belittling, uh, those words that are just constantly nagging, words that cause people to break, cause people to break. As a teacher, um, Boy, I, I, we struggle with this every single day. Kids are just so mean to each other. They're so mean to each other. I am constantly telling them, hey, kind words. Hey, what are you doing? Don't say that. That was not necessary. And it's almost automatic, okay? I, if, if your kids are like this, because as parents, I have three boys, and boy, it's, 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 it's like it's being contagious, you know, like my kids, one of them do, does something and then one of them quickly just puts them down, you know, like, man, this is, man, look, mama, make the best airplane ever. And then the other one is like, yeah, but it doesn't fly, okay? <laughs> and I mean, it's just constantly one of the other, right? Okay? Uh, let's, let's all watch a movie. Yeah, let's pick this one. No, that's the worst movie. I mean, it's just constantly. And as a teacher, I am, I mean, my job should just be, putting out fires of criticism but it, because it's just constantly, constantly, constantly. Kind words, God. As a matter of fact, we have a, um, if you don't know, if you're here in the Alvin District, there's a program that schools use called Capturing Kids' Hearts. Um, and this is not like, oh, I got you, you know. No, <laughs> yeah, you're mine. <laughs> you know, squeeze the heart out. No, but this is about, uh, about reaching a child. And if you would like to teach a child First of all, they have to know that you care and that you love them. And so you want to have that positive environment for them. And so we are constantly showing uh, words of encouragement. We're constantly on the PA, on the radio, on the, on the announcements. We're constantly saying, you know, have a great day, you know, or not. The choice is really yours. I mean, that's a constant thing. We're always... Out in the halls, we have posters that talk about, you know, um, uh, um, uh, be brave or, or, or those, those messages that just inspire people. Because our world is just full of criticism, full of criticism. And you know what? Um, again, I, I keep saying this, and, and I hope it just kind of sinks in, but I feel that this is the year of honesty for all of us. We're, we're looking at ourselves, we're reflecting in our, in our relationship with the Lord and our relationship with others. Um, and this is something that I battle the most, criticism. I battle the most. And sometimes we might say, oh, criticism, <clears throat> great. Um, as soon as the message is over, I'm going to post this link on my Facebook because I want my mother-in-law to hear this. You know, <laughs> I, 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 want, I want my coworkers to hear this because they're so critical of me. But, you know, in, in, in all honesty, sometimes when we become critics, we don't see ourselves as a critic. Like, we don't. We look at ourselves in the mirror and you're like, we're not the ones with the problem. They are, <laughs> right? They're the ones with the problem, not me. So when we criticize, okay, and correct me if I'm wrong, but when we criticize, we try to justify it, right? We want to feel like the experts, like we know it all, like they deserved it. Um, as I grew up, uh, I, I was criticized my whole life. And, and, and again, we can go around and just have a microphone and like, have you been criticized? Yeah. 
all of us. I mean, all of us can put pictures up here about how we were all criticized. And then, you know, I went to the vault. <laughs> I went to the vault in my life, in my personal life, and I pulled some pictures. And I guess I was criticized. I, I know I was criticized all my life, but I guess I kind of gave them a reason to. <laughs> all right. Uh, here's a picture of me in a bike club. This is me in a bike club. Oh, yeah, this is me in a bike club. Uh, I was the only member of the bike club, all right? It was just me. I actually found this bike in the trash, and I, and I, it was, this is what, you know, us gangsters, we call lowrider bikes, all right? <clears throat> and, uh, <laughs> and I found that bike, and I, and I got it, I fixed it all up, I painted it, you know? I, I, as you can see, I painted it, and, and I did everything. Uh, and, and this is when I lived in Freeport. We lived in the house on, on 9th Street, I remember. And, uh, I mean, this was a cool bike. It had those, it had the pedals really low. And so I painted it. I let it dry. And then I was like, I'm ready for my first, you know, uh, for my first ride. And so I got on it. <clears throat> now, mind you, the pedals are really low because us gangsters, you know, this is, this is like like low rider bike, right? And so I was, I was riding it. And then over there in, in Freeport where I live, there was actually like, like, a, little, um, like a little hill uh, where the concrete, it wasn't a hill. It was actually uh, the concrete just broke. And so, and so there was like a big crack right in the street. And so as I was riding it, one of my pedals just caught that, that crack on it. And when he caught it, the bike flipped me upside down and it scraped my elbows and everything. Let me tell you something. I, I was in a bike club for one day and then I demolished the bike club and I said, no more. We're not going to be part of this anymore. So I destroyed the bike and that's the future. And then here I am. Um, what's the next one, Sam? Uh, let's see. Oh, yeah, that's right. This is me. This is me. Uh, I was all into eagles. I had a collection of eagles. So every time there was a picture on a magazine, I would cut it out. And, and, and I don't have a picture of this, but, uh, but uh, uh, Leavet remembers, uh, um, and my mom and, and, and everybody remembers that I had this, uh, um, what is it called? Um, okay, I was weird. I put everything on the walls of my house, like everything. And I'm not talking about like just pictures. I'm talking about everything. I won a, 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 some award. I put it on the wall. I, I get that. That's that's fine. But I also went to the store and I put the receipts on the walls because that was a special moment that I had because I bought a piece of gum for Liavet or something like that and I put the receipt. Um, Liavet would give me some of the trash as we were having a date, and I would put that in the, the, the wall. All right, I was weird, okay? And then I had eagles everywhere. I had eagles everywhere. And um, all right, fine. Maybe I gave them a, a, a reason why to criticize. Uh, this is me in band, and, and I kind of try to blew it up. I don't know where the other picture is. The one with all the people, Sam, and it has a circle. There I am. That's right, there I am, and I don't know if you can see, but I am wearing a vest, <laughs> and I'm wearing a, uh, what is that, flannel, is that the, the like the, the itchy kind of vest, um, yeah, I was a vest guy, yeah, that's right, yeah, go ahead, criticize me, uh, and by the way, I don't know if you can see my hair, because, you know, you can't, kind of see it there, but I had the uh, McDonald's uh, hairstyle. You guys know what the McDonald's hairstyle? Like a big M right here in the middle, right? Like one side just goes this way, one side goes on the other, right? Uh, I never put gel. It was like, for what? I am a teenager. You know, I don't put gel. Um, and then I think there's one last one, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, yeah, there it is. This was, this was when I came right from Mexico. Yes, I am wearing matching shirts and matching shorts, in case you don't see that. Uh, and actually, that's probably something my mom uh, sewed for me. So, uh, And if what you can't see is that I'm actually wearing matching socks, too. So, um, yeah, maybe I gave people a reason why to criticize me growing up. Uh, this is me, folks. This is me, the year of honesty. I have some more, but... Uh, those are, I'm just going to keep those for myself. All right. Um, social media does not help at all in today's world, does it? It doesn't help at all. Um, when, when you post something, you are, you are opening it up to criticism. Uh, as a matter of fact, we were watching uh, a movie with the kids, uh, Wreck-It Ralph 2. And in Wreck-It Ralph 2, there's a scene, spoiler alert, okay, for anybody who's watching 
there's a scene where Wreck-It Ralph uh, creates these videos and then he goes into an area in the internet where there's all the comments are being posted. And of course, you know, you can find positive comments. But then he starts to read all of the negative, negative, negative comments. And that just kind of tears him up. And the, the person that is showing him around tells him, oh, forgot to tell you, the number one rule on the internet is you don't read the comments. You don't read the comments. But social media has definitely not helped. Uh, we all criticize. We all do. Um, we criticize the way we dress. The, we criticize what other people are, are wearing. We criticize what they post. We criticize what they drive. Look at what they're driving. And he doesn't even have a job. You know, I mean, we're just criticizing. We criticize how much money ma people make. We criticize how much money people don't have. I mean, we're just full of criticism. We criticize how others raise their kids. Um, we criticize the, the lack of, of, of self-discipline. I mean, we are just terrible at this church. We all do it. As a matter of fact, if you ever like the post, it's because you criticize it, whether it was something that you liked or something that you didn't, um, whether we approved it or not. And church, this is why, if I can just interject just a little promo here, this is why, the, you know, the world is surrounded by criticism and constantly our kids, our youth, are faced with criticism. I mean, if you notice the change from where your son, your daughter wore whatever was in the closet to where now it's like, uh-uh, mom, I can't wear that. My kindergartner... Okay, my kindergartner, we put in his lunchbox those little applesauce, the ones that you slurp out, right? You know what I'm talking about? The, the, the little bottles with the little tip, you slurp out, right? Those are delicious. This is like so good, right? Uh, but my son, we would put that little uh, uh, um, apple uh, sauce in, in his lunchbox, in his Superman's lunchbox, you know, lunchbox, and we put it in there, and then we noticed that, that it came back. It always came back. It was always back, like, okay, Joshua, do you not like applesauce anymore? Like, no, Dad, if I eat that, they say that I'm a baby because it looks like a bottle, right? And my kindergartner is facing Christian, and he is changing his lifestyle ba based on what people see about him. And it is terrible. It is terrible. And that's what our children are faced with. That's why... It is so important that you get your children, that you have your children, that you have your teenagers, your junior hires, your young adults, you yourself embedded in some sort of a life group that builds you up. That's why I love the Royal Rangers and the girls' ministry. That's why I love our young adults' life group. That's why I love my junior high and high school group. And there's a girls' group as well. Because what are they doing? They're building each other up, not with their own words, but with the Word of God. That's what we are doing. We are preparing, we are surrounding them with words that God says you are more than a conqueror. The words of, that says you are blessed going in and blessed going out. Words that says you are, you are designed with, God had you in mind when he designed you from the inside out. Before you were even born, God already knew you. I mean, we are just showering them with those kinds of words. So that when they face this world, they have something to hold on to. That when they face criticism, they say, you know what? That's what you might think about me. But I know what God knows about me. You see the difference? That's what you, uh, your point of view about me is. But this is God's point of view. So, I encourage you, Wednesday nights, this church turns into an amazing, amazing place of learning and building each other up. So, I encourage you. Why not? Why not? Now, I'm going to read to you um, 
I'm going to read to you a, um, a verse. You probably know this verse. As a matter of fact, some of you, you probably memorized this verse. You've heard it everywhere. I know you have. Um, this is found in Galatians 5, 14. It says, for the whole law can be summed up in this one command. I mean, if you know this, help me with the underlying words. Ready? Love your neighbor as yourself. Help me out. Let's participate this morning. How many of you, you heard this verse before? Let me see. Let me see. Yep. See, the majority of you heard this verse. I myself have heard this verse many times. Every time I have a dispute with my neighbor, I have to remember about this verse. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I have any neighbor. Um, not behind me, but they're coming out now. Yeah. Um, I love my neighbors. I love them. I love them. Now, they're dogs. That's a different thing. Okay. All right. Because they don't have cute little dogs. They have some dogs. <laughs> yeah. And um, every morning at 530 in the morning, it's like go outside. And when they go outside, I mean, you, if you're a dog, you're a dog. You just love being outside, I guess, some of them. And, and, and they, they just bark like if it was 3 o'clock in the afternoon. 5 there in the morning. And then the other dogs are like, oh, my friends. And then the other dogs across the two streets over. It's like, oh, Lord. I love, you know, love my neighbors as I love myself. Um, but may, maybe you, you don't know the follow-up. Maybe, maybe you don't, you, we stop at this part where love your neighbor as yourself. And then maybe we, we kind of forget about verse 15. Look at what verse 15 says. But if you are always uh, biting and devouring one another, what does that say? Watch out. Interesting. I, I've, you know, I've read this verse many times, but we usually stop at 14. Why go on, right? So this is good. This is good teaching. Love your, your neighbor as yourself. Got it. Got it. Got it. But then he continues by saying, but if you're always biting and devouring one another, watch out. Help me out with the underline. Beware of. Yeah. And how do we destroy one another? We criticize each other. We do. God, I, this whole week, I, I, it's been conviction after conviction after conviction. People say, hurt people will hurt people, right? You heard that before? Hurt people, I've said this before, will hurt people. And, and, and I started thinking, you know, all my life I've been criticized, and now this is the result of it. Like, I, I, I'm becoming a very critical person. I, I'm very nitpicking. You know, I can, I, I, I can walk into a classroom. I can walk into a church. I can walk into a ministry and, and just, this is negative, 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 negative. Oh, but let's love each other. You're my neighbor. So love, as, you know, as I love myself. Right? But be aware that we are destroying each other. Have you ever seen the commercial of the the the, the cinnamon uh, the the cereal where they're like eating each other, which makes no sense, right? Because it's like what are they called the uh, the what? Cinnamon yeah, cinnamon toast crunch, right? And they're eating each other, and that doesn't make any sense because ew, you're eating yourself basically, and the round round. But that's what we're doing. We're just eating. We're destroying one another what if your words what if your words your critical words what if your words are destroying your marriage today what if your words are building this wall between you and your children and this whole week, it's just been like, God, help me because the same way that people were critical of me, I'm becoming critically, critical, very critical of my own children. To the point where Leavet has to tell me, hey, go back outside and come back in. Because I come from work. And as soon as I go in, the kids are like, hey, daddy, hey, daddy. And I'm like. Why are the shoes in the living room? Why are you toys over here? Oh my God, how many times do I have to tell you? 
Hey, why didn't you get the trash? I mean, it's just like critical, critical, critical. And I bet you guys know, ladies, you guys got that look. You know what I'm talking about? Y'all know the look, okay? You destroy us with the look. You don't have to say anything. Right? You know what I'm talking about. Some of you are giving me that look right now. <laughs> I mean, there's a look, and that look I already know. And boy, this is just convicting because, you know, I am not helping them. What I am actually doing, I am building a wall to the point where, hey, mom, when is that coming? Five o'clock, boys, man, we, we, we got we to gotta, we gotta do something. We gotta, I mean, it, then it becomes a fear. And that's not what I want for my children. I want them to come and be joyful that dad is here. Not, dad, can you wait like an hour longer for you to come? <laughs> We're not finished yet, you know? Could your words be destroying friends? Could your words be destroying, watch this, the ability for you to witness to someone about Jesus. Could your criticism, your critical words at work, at school, wherever you are, could those words, powerful words, could they be damaging the opportunity for you to preach someone about Jesus? Think about it. Because if you're so critical and so negative, then the next time you come around, oh, hey, by the way, hey, hum, Jesus loves you. And he has great plans for your life. I don't want to be like you. If that's what Christianity is, I don't want it. Does that make sense? I mean, it happens. So today, you must, we must be honest with ourselves. Check our words. And when you go home today, when you go to a restaurant, when you leave, as you leave and, and you say hello to people, high five, hugs. Today we have a barbecue sale that is going to benefit our, our kids going to uh, the Camparama and the, and the uh, Power Chicks. As you leave, watch out, be careful, be aware not to destroy one another. Look at what Proverbs says, Proverbs 12, 18. Says so some people make, help me out, they make what? Cut and remarks. You know, you're talking to your friends. Man, last night went to the Rockets game, bro. Well, I guess my phone is not working because you didn't call me. You ever heard of that one, you know? Well, never ringed, you know? Man, B dubs last night was great. You didn't call me. I mean, it's just little cutting remarks. You know, the, the guys between each other, right? Little cutting remarks. But the words of the wise, help me out, bring healing. Say that out loud. They do what? They bring healing. What a contrast in the two. You notice that both are using words, but one of them, they use words to bring little cutting remarks, little, little, little negative things, little criticism here and there. You know, like a little chisel. They're just, just cutting you away. Not in a positive way, not molding you, but just taking some good stuff out of you. But on the other side, the words of the wise, same kind of instrument, words, so that they bring what? Healing. Healing. Wow, do you notice that? That in your lips right now, you're not a pastor, you're not an usher, you're not, you know, a, a prayer partner. That, that, that does not matter. You as an individual human being, God has placed Power in your lips, power in the, the tongue for you to give a word, a wise word to someone. And that word can actually result in healing. Wow. I love when Pastor Abelino does that in the Spanish service. Have you seen her? Wow. I love that. I'm going to bring it to the English. Wow. You should be jumping up and down. You're right, right? You see that, right? Wow, what an incredible insight to God's word. And by the way, this is the kind of word that I am encouraging our junior high, high school boys. This is the kind of words that the girls are encouraging their girl group. That Pastor Andrew and Pastor Dominique are encouraging their young adults. 
that our adult leaders are encouraging the married couples, the single ladies, the single men back there in that table. These are the kinds of words that we want everyone to be surrounded by. Why? Because they build you up. Watch Ephesians 4. Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful, help me out for building others up. I tell you what, this whole week has been a week of God, I am sorry. God, I am sorry. God, I am sorry. I am texting people. I am sorry for what I've said. I'm sorry if you took it the wrong way. I'm not even making excuses, church. I am just simply being that type of person that is just being critical, 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 critical. Build uh, others up according to their needs. That it may benefit those who what? Those who listen. You have no idea. I have no idea. We don't have any idea how much criticism can actually hurt someone's heart. We have no idea how a single word God can use for encouragement. So I'm going to finish with two points and then we'll be done today. Here's my question. Which do you want to be? That's my question to you. Ask your neighbor. Being quiet here this morning. Ask your neighbor. I know this is a lot to handle, uh, so that I understand. But ask your neighbor, which do you want to be? Go ahead. And, and if there's uh, 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 your spouse, ask them, which honey, honey, which one do you want to be? Which one do you want to be? Do you want to be number one? Do you want to be a fault finder? And by the way, we have plenty of fault finders. I would be the one to lift my hand first and tell you that I was a fault finder. We criticize everything. We look at our spouse and we begin to criticize and we begin to find faults right away. We look at our children and we begin to find faults, find faults, find faults. We are on 45, and we're finding faults everywhere. You know what I'm talking about? Everywhere. And if you're driving through 288 where there's like this big construction, you begin to find faults everywhere. If you're at your job, you, begin, you get in. It's Monday morning. You start finding faults everywhere, everywhere. Well, who left the trash can here? I mean, I mean, just things everywhere. You begin, you're, you're a fault finder. You're, 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 we are kind of, and, and I include myself into that church, we're kind of like the Pharisees. That was their job, unfortunately, was to find fault, find sin, find fault, find fault, find it everywhere. Find it everywhere, find fault. And by the way, we are, and, I, and, and, and if you get offended, I'm sorry, but we're like the devil. The devil is a fault finder. The Bible says that he is the accuser of the brethren. That's what the Bible says in Revelation 12. He's the accuser of the brethren. He always points out fault. Look at what's wrong. Look at the way they walk. Look at the way they dress. Look, look, look what they're driving. Look, look, look what they're doing. I mean, we're just constantly, constantly finding fault. And, and here's the point. When we criticize others, Sometimes we are like, hey, I'm criticizing others because I'm smart, because I know better, because, you know, I can. But in all honesty, if you are like me, the reason why I criticize others is because I myself was very insecure, very insecure. I was insecure about by the way I look. I was insecure about my hairstyle. I was insecure about where my life is going. I was insecure that I didn't have a dad growing up. Oh, my goodness, how I, how I criticized everyone who had a father. Everyone who had uh, my best friend had a perfect, great relation with his dad, but I will criticize it all the time. I was so insecure. And there's others who criticize, and let's be honest, there's others who criticize who are just simply want to be mean-spirited. I mean, they're just simply out to just destroy other people. Sometimes we just, we are very critical because we just don't understand. 
we don't understand what it is to have two jobs. We don't understand what it is to be a single parent, so we criticize. Man, look, they don't have control over their children. It's just one person with four kids, and she has three jobs to take care of them. But we criticize because we just don't understand. How many of you, you criticize people when you were growing up and you got married? We criticize other marriages because of their children. Look, they don't know how to take care of their children. But then you had children and you understood what it is to have children, <laughs> what it is to have a two-year-old at Walmart, in the middle of the toy store, the toy area where they just throw themselves on the floor. And call out, I'm going to call CPS on you, mom. <laughs> People don't understand. So we criticize. That was Jonathan, by the way, remember? <laughs> he will scream out, she's hurting me, or something like that, right? Just, we don't understand, so we criticize. And by the way, I've never met a person that wanted I've never met a fault finder that I wanted to be like. Did you wake up this morning and say, who's the best fault finder in the world? I want to be just like that one. No, instead, be, instead of being a fault finder, here's the second option. Do you want to be a hope giver? Tell your neighbor, hope Come on, tell your neighbor, hope. Do you want to be a hope giver? This is what a hope giver does. And Romans 15 says the following. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may help me out overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. I want to be a hope giver. I don't want to be a fault finder anymore. Anybody else? Just say amen. Just say amen. I, I'm in the same boat, Pastor. I'm in the same boat. I don't want to keep, I don't want that when I enter into a room, people begin to hide. People begin to murmur. I want to be able, I want you to be able that when you go into a room, people know, hey, he carries the hope that we need. She carries the hope that we need. That wherever you go, hey, it's going to be all right. They're coming. Hope is coming. They're hope givers. They're hope givers. Romans 8, Paul, just, if you have a chance, I'm just going to highlight a couple of things from Romans 8. But Romans 8, Paul was a, a great hope giver type of person. I mean, he just gave hope, gave hope, gave hope, gave hope constantly, constantly, constantly. And in Romans 8, I'm just going to, uh, I just cut, uh, cut a, a couple of things from here. But in Romans 8, Paul says, there is no condemnation for those who belong to Christ. That's hope. Imagine all of their lives are listening to people saying, you are going to spend eternity in hell. You are going to, and you're going to be punished for the rest of your life. And then here comes Paul and says, no, listen, there is no condemnation for those who belong to Jesus. Look at the hope. Spirit helps you in your weakness. Man, I'm so weak. I don't know uh, how I can handle. Hey, the spirit will become strong in your weakness. Hope. Jesus is at the right hand of God, and he is praying for you. He's interceding for you. That's hope. You are more than a conqueror. <laughs> Man, that's hope. And then one of my favorite, favorite scriptures in that, in that same uh, uh, a book, neither death nor life, neither angels or demons, neither present or future, nor any powers, neither hide nor depth, nor anything else in all creation can separate us from the love in Christ Jesus, of God in Christ Jesus. Amen. What a hope. What a hope giver. That's who I want to be. That's who I want to be. I'm going to ask the band to come up. Let me finish with this story. A woman was caught in adultery 
in, uh, in, Bible, in the Bible um, in the New Testament. And the Pharisees, the fault finders, came and said, the law says that she be put to death. The law says that we should stone her, throw stones at her until she dies. That was what the law said. Fault finders. These guys brought her, dragged her at the feet of Christ. And what did Jesus do? Jesus, the greatest hope giver ever. What did he do? He knelt down and began to write. Oh, the Bible doesn't say what he wrote on the, on the ground, but many scholars feel that he began to write the sins of the Pharisees. Because the Bible says that one by one, they dropped the, the stone and they walked away. And then my most favorite part of the story, and that's where Jesus lifts her up and asks her, sweetheart, where are all your accusers? Where are they? And she looks around, finds none of them. And what does Jesus say? Hey, go on your way and sin no more. Wow, that's a hope giver. That's a hope giver. That when you come, when I come to you, when you come to us, that we will not point out each other's sins, but instead we can always point each other to Jesus Christ, the greatest hope ever. There's no point. There's no point in me listing the amounts of sins that you've done. There's no point in you listing my sins. When we ask Christ for forgiveness, he tears that li God tears that list apart and gets rid of it and remembers your sins, my sins, no more. No more. No more. No more. Satan is the father of lies. He's called the deceiver, the prince of darkness. He is called the accuser. But Jesus, Jesus is the way. Jesus is the truth. Jesus is the life. He is the living hope. That's who he is. Let me recap. A fault finder is a person that is a mean-spirited or, or, or does it out of, I want to, I am smarter, I, but really you don't understand. A fault finder is someone who belittles, someone who tears down. That's not who I want us to be. Who I want us to be is a hope giver. It's a hope giver. People that lift each other up. People that shrink each other up. People that encourage each other up. People who forgive one another. And if you receive that, would you say amen? Your children might not be the best behave, might not be the best at what they do. But goodness gracious, God has given you those two, three, seven bundles of joy. Love them. Have patience with them. Embrace them. Your spouse, you know, maybe your wife is not the most organized person, but boy, she's a great mom lift that part of her life encourage her ladies your husband might not be the best at something don't keep pointing that out instead look at what he does do great he's a great provider he's a great mechanic he's a great yard artist I don't know <laughs> he's just great at this other thing Let's build each other. Let's highlight that. Let's be hope givers. My prayer is that when we as Emmanuel Worship Center, when we are out and about, when we are out in our community, when we are out at Walmart, at Kroger, at Heb, H -E -B, at uh, Tarjay, wherever we are, I pray that people will know that we serve Jesus Christ by the way that we talk, by the way that we act, by the way that we treat each other.
that we are all hope givers and not fault finders. If you agree with that statement, say amen and amen. Would you stand to your feet this morning? I, Irving, very prideful, very insecure, fault finder, number one, right here. Fault finder, number one, right here. But I've learned that I am not going to point out the speck that you have in your eye while I have a huge telephone pole in mine. I'm going to ask God to continue dealing with my life personally. In the meantime, boy, I'm going to be the best hope giver that I can be. You know why? Because we serve a God who is so merciful and so graceful that gave me hope. Who am I not to give somebody else hope? Who am I not to share that hope? Would you close your eyes and bow your heads this morning? Father, I thank you and I praise you for what you are doing. I thank you, God, that you are working in all of our lives. Throughout this church, God, there are all sorts of kinds of people. People who are very critical, people who are becoming very critical, or some that are just critical sometimes. But we are all sinners looking for a Savior. We are all in need. I mean, this is a heavy message to talk about, God. This is a heavy series because we are re being honest and reflecting with ourselves. And we are reflecting ourselves in that mirror of holiness and saying, Man, we don't have it all together. But I am so glad, and here are the good, here's the good news. The good news is that you are merciful and graceful, and that you are here to love us, and you are here to continue working in our lives, because we matter so much to you. We love you, Jesus. We praise you for what you are doing in our lives.